And tonight, a British sporting icon, Bob Champion CBE, who was a highly successful jump jockey before being struck down by testicular cancer in July 1979. This hugely popular figure saw a nation pray for his recovery. It took time and was hard fought, but the theme of Bob's life is winning. Following his miraculous recovery from cancer, he bounced back in the best way possible, winning the 1981 Grand National on Alderniti. His incredible story became a film, Champions, a box office smash, with John Hurt playing the man himself. I'm told he asked for Clint Eastwood. And I'm delighted to say that Bob Champion joins me now. Bob, welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. You were at the height of your powers as an athlete and at the top of your career as a jockey. Can you take me through your emotions when you received that cancer diagnosis? Well, well, it was absolutely strange. Anyway, welcome back, Mark. You've been away for a few days. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Bob. Um, basically, I was a very fit jockey at the time, having my best season. And I always spent um, the summer in America um, to ride over there because there was no racing here, jumping. And um, I had this ache and pain. And um, so basically, I was lucky. I'll be honest. Um, I started going out with a vet, a lady vet, mind you. And when I managed to get her into bed, um, the first thing she said to me was, if I was you, I'd get on the first plane back to England and see a specialist. Well, that put me off my stroke, I promise you. And um, <laughs> got back to England. I rang a doctor up in Park Street Clinic in London who used to patch us jockeys up, um, Dr. Turner, and told him what was wrong, not having a clue what was wrong. And he said, ring me back in 20 minutes and I'll have an appointment for you. So rang him back, ended up going to the Royal Marsden and then basically started the treatment. I had testicular cancer, but it had spread and um, I'd left it a little bit too late, really. And um, so they gave me choices, actually. They gave me two choices. They had a new chemotherapy, which was very barbaric those days. Or I said I didn't want anything. I would just carry on riding with a bit of luck and get killed on the racetrack. And they looked at me if I was stupid. Most likely I was. And said, well, you know, basically, if you don't have any treatment, you'll be lucky to live six or seven months. And we'll give, uh, and with the treatment, we'll give you about a 30% chance of re recovery. So thankfully, I had the treatment and recovered. Did getting the disease and surviving it change you as a person, Bob? Yes, it did, actually. Um, it made me appreciate everything, I must admit, and take every day as it comes. And, um, you know, I was lucky. It was very, very hard to get fit again, I must admit because the drugs had um, destroyed about 60% um, of my lung capacity. So being a jockey without good lungs isn't a very good thing. So I had to work really, really hard. And I think it helped me going back to America, not just going back there, because the weather was warm over there, and I found it easier to train. And I think that got me back two or three months quicker than if I'd stayed in the cold weather here in England. Did the survival of cancer make you braver, less fearful on a horse? I think, um, well, firstly, I didn't want to die in the first place, but I think it might have made me braver. Um, you know, I was a pretty decent jockey um, before I had the cancer, and um, I'm not saying I was as good when I came back. I was a couple of years older as well. Um, it was so hard to get fit. That was the hardest bit. And, um, you know, basically I was getting by on knowing what to do, really, in the first few rides. And mm. I got fitter as the season went on, I must admit. And, um, you know, thankfully, uh, when the old horse came back, old and eaty, I was pretty fit then. And um, I can remember he came back into training on January the 1st, um, back to Josh's, because he'd broken down so badly at Sandown, um, the vets wanted to put him down. But, but I said one day he'd win a national one day and the owners must have believed me. And um, so he was absolutely amazing. He was in plaster, tied up in a stable for six months, couldn't lie down, 
just eating out of his bowl and water there for six months. He would have sent me crazy. Then he went back to Josh's on um, January the 1st, 1981. Uh, February the 13th, he went to Ascot in the uh, Whitbread trial, absolutely bolted up. And I can remember that morning um, seeing he was 66 to 1 for the national and 16 to 1 to win the Whitbread trial. As you know, jockeys aren't allowed to bet, but mothers were. Um, <laughs> she had a few quid on. Uh, let's talk about that Grand National win after your recovery. Did you have a good feeling on the day? How did the race itself feel as it was happening? Well, I was always very confident the old horse would win, and I was ultra confident. And, you know, you got down to the start and um, you do all the work down there, check your girths, look where your horses you're going to track are, your dangers, and you line up and the governor went down and... Um, I can always remember the governor saying, you know, we've got here and everything. And I said, governor, if I win, you can pack up smoking. And I, after he, I won, he gave up smoking. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but the race went all right after I jumped the first two. He overjumped the first, nearly went. It wasn't great at the second. From that moment, he was a joy to ride, I must admit. Uh, my orders were hold him up into the last fence. I jumped to the front at Valentine's the first time, uh, which is three and a half miles from home. And all I could think for, of the next three and a half miles was the rollicking I'm getting from the stands from the governor. But I knew I was in the right place. I was jumping for fun. And, um, you know, I came to the last in front. I thought I'm in the right place at the right time and went and won three lengths. And the rest is history. Do you still ride horses, Bob? No, I don't, actually. I haven't sat on one for a... I did sit on one last year, uh, just sat on one, but I'm a little bit heavy, actually. I'd, if I was a two-stone lighter, I'd ride out every day um, because I'd be able to ride work. And yeah. um, I just don't fancy just riding around the roads or anything. I've done all that in the past. And, um, you know, riding work, if I was light enough, I would love to, I must admit. Uh, Bob, a true privilege to have you on the show. You have surely raised more awareness in this country than anyone else about the horrible disease that is cancer. You set up the Bob Champion Cancer Trust, which is now 40 years old. So congratulations on that and an incredible career. And I hope we catch up again soon. Thanks very much. Have a good evening. The amazing Bob Champion, CBE. I remember my mum and dad took the family to see champions. What a film.